Hey guys, I play the guitar now. Was it good? Yeah. You just don't want to hear me do this anymore, do you? All right, let's use my good friend, the cube and or box and let's do some of the, the basic teachings again right Let, let's go back to those fundamentals so first let me draw a box on a new layer okay so in this video i want to talk a little bit about lighting and the best and easiest way to set up lighting is just in your head put a light source somewhere so this light source is oh let me let me say somewhere here it's a distance from the cube, but it's sort of on the, on, on the same lay, uh, plate. Let me make sure it's, it should be a little bit further away. All right, somewhere, somewhere here. I like it like that. So what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to create a new layer below the cube. I'm going to select the area of the cube and just fill it with white. There we go. That was a control backspace or command backspace. So now we have it. There we go. It's filled with white. I'm going to lock this layer. And what I'm going to do next is what, so what you learn from books is usually that you have a base color. Let's say that's a very light gray, fill it with gray. And then the top side is usually the, 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 the lightest side. Then we can go a little bit darker on the front and then quite a bit darker on the other side. There we go. It's not quite a bit darker, but a bit darker. And I feel like the top could be a little bit lighter, just so just so we have this nice... Yeah, that, that, that is already better. So this is shading. Obviously, you can go a much... You can go... What, so my mistake is that I, I usually stand... Stay too light within my values. So let's make sure that uh, it is sort of clear to everybody what the three sides are. So they, they are the, the three sides. And, and this is how you're going to shade everything. But, so what I like to do a little bit is, let me just fill the whole block with this top white. And then what I like to do is, I take the front. And then, because the light is up here, I'm going to use my gradient tool and go a little bit darker and just pull up a little bit and give it a, a gradient coming from the ground just because we have more light that it hits top side and less light that it hits uh, uh, at, towards the bottom. Obviously this is a little bit exaggerated but it just brings everything a little bit nicer. Now on the side that it's in shadow it's a little bit the opposite right? Well, not right, but let me explain why. Because the closer it comes to the ground, you get a little bit of reflection of the ground, and there's usually usually some light reflection. So what I like to do, I like to go the other way. So I, I have more darkness on the top and more light on the bottom because you have this sort of uh, reflection there. So something like that. And then what I like to do, since the light comes from this side, I'm just going to a pure white now. And just going to drag in a little bit of white from from there so we have a nice transition here as well just bring a little bit of the gray back something like that and a little bit of the white there we go and then what i like to do as well just create a new layer for the highlights take a, a complete white color and just make sure to outline these edges with white and then the whole box is going to pop much nicer. There we go. What you can do is actually go down to your colors. Uh, I'm gonna hit Control M, which stands for curves. That's in the adjustment, and you can you can make everything a little bit darker as well. There we go. And that is that is our box. And before we move on, uh, there's two more elements that I feel are important to learn. So one would be the cylinder. All right, same stick with the cylinder. I'm gonna unlock the layer below the lines and I'm going to use my lasso tool to select everything within the cylinder. Make sure that the line, that the selection is within the lines. And then I'm just going to fill it, control backspace with white and then lock this layer again. For further, I'm going to just name these as well, color or value value 
this layer is going to be lines and this layer is going to be highlight there we go so back to our values I'm going to pick the darkest here okay so what we're having here technically I'm going to fill first I'm making a selection around my cylinder and I'm filling that with the gray so the light is still on the left side which means our shadow should be on the right side so I'm going to fill, uh, select just the side not the top of the cylinder so I'm going to leave the top unselected and same with my gradient tool I'm just going to start pulling in this dark here. I'm going to go a little bit darker now. And I'm going to explain it in one second. So this is our cylinder. In elements, well, in elements, in everything, we have a light side and we have a, a dark side, right? What is in shadow. But here, because this is a rounded shape, right? It's, it's not clearly divided. So one thing that is, is usually for, for round object is that we have also either a back, backlight or uh, something that's a reflection. And because this is round, as I said, there is some light coming around it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the values. I'm going to pick this color and with a gradient tool, I'm just going to bring just a little bit of it back into the image, as you can see here. And now, this is here, this is called the core shadow. So with round objects, you will have this core shadow. And we will, we will do a sphere with, in, a, in a second, just for you to see. Uh, what I could actually do is I could go even darker. So I'm just going to get full, full black gradient tool. Oh, the selection is not there now. What is it? No, it is, it is not there. So let me just do this selection again. It's just because I wanted that core shadow to be a little bit darker. There we go. And then on top of it, actually I can reverse the selection. Control shift I uh, turns this direction around. Control shift I and I deselect the cube and I'm going to take my gradient tool and pick white and just add a light highlight to the, to the top of it. And what you can do as well, we can on the value area, we can um, to the selection again. I like doing selections as you can see. And you can bring a little bit more highlight here. And just as before, a little bit of that darker uh, tone can come back around just a bit. I just have to make sure. Oh, that's actually enough. I also picked too much of a dark gradient there. Bring, let me bring this back. Because of, of the round shape, oh, I can go with the black. Because of this round shape, you will never have the darkest on this edge and the lightest on this edge. They will always creep a little bit towards the inside. So this will be the darkest area and somebody somewhere here will be the, the, the highlight area. And now let's go and do a sphere as well. Let me see if I can freehand. Lesser tool and make sure that every click is on the line. So line will cover the edges of our selection and this is where i do the transition unlock the bottom layer fill it with white and then lock it again and i'm going to select this gray see all of it so i have to select this area and then do the fill all right q 
keep this area selected. Now I'm going to switch to an airbrush, to a soft one, and make it somewhat bigger. Go to the, pick a darkest area, and just fill in this underline, like, like a half moon. And I'm just filling it in. There we go. And I pick this gray again, and I just make sure to come back with it again. And I pick the lightest, which is, yeah, a white. And I'm, again, I'm not going to be on the edges. I'm going to be a little bit on the inside of my sphere. And what I'm also going to do, I'm going to take a lighter color. And just as I did with my cylinder, I'm going to go a little bit around it. And this is one, it's, it's the same rounded effect, but two, it's also a little bit of uh, what we had with the cube of the reflection of the ground and the, the surroundings. Uh, once again, I noticed this is not dark enough, so I'm going to go full black and just slightly touch it here again. And now I can come back with a lighter gray, make my brush smaller. And just lightly touch it on the outskirts. Something like this. So this is quite a strong outer line, but I'm fine with it. There we go. So let me bring this back in. I can erase this part and switch back to my... So as you can see, this is highlight. Same as here, highlight, and same as here, highlight. And then we have core shadow. You have core shadow here, and we have core shadow there. And then we have a little bit of reflection here as well. Reflection here as well. Reflection. So as I said, I'm not always going for super accurate. The reflection here, uh, Okay, let me add a new layer. So the reflection here is quite strong. So this, this would be a relatively, uh, whatever the ground here is, it would be quite reflective. And here technically should be some reflection as well, but because this light is stronger than the reflection here, I emphasize that here it's lighter and then it becomes darker and darker and darker. Uh, I go back to my highlights. I take a full white and what you can do is you can do the edges with this white again just to give that little bit more reflection you can also if you want you can add this one line here just to make sure that it's if you want it to be super reflective like if, if it's glossy and the same thing here you can add a little bit of a, a, a drop somewhere just of white representing that reflectiveness and this is basic shading. And if, if you want to go to color, what I like to do and what's, what's the easiest for me, I just make a new layer. And if you click onto the layer, so not on the value part, but on the box part here, I'm going to control click on it. It selects the shape there. So what I can do on this new layer, I'm just going to choose a color, let's say this blue, and I fill it with that blue, control backspace. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the layer mode to overlay. And you already have color. Now, what's happening with overlay, it's a little bit desaturated, I find. Well, not desaturated, but yeah, sort of desaturated. If you want, instead of white, to for it to have a color as well, I would go on either hard light or vivid light, but then as you can see, it also gets super blown on a saturation. So a hard light usually works relatively well, and then you can just add a new layer and you can bring in a little bit of, uh, of that white if you want to have a little bit extra gloss, because that means wherever there's light, it means that it's really shiny and it really reflects whatever is there. So you can add a blood there, you can switch to your soft round and also just fill it up a little bit like that. And it's already much, much glossier. And, and same for your box. Like I would bring those, uh, the edges back with the white to make sure to just bring the edges back to white. And then what I would do is also make a little bit of selection. Uh, so L, 
Uh, and oh, actually, let me cut these parts off. And then just coming with a little bit of white, you can clean it up like that. And you can do that, of course, for the front side as well. A bit of white. And here you can take a soft brush for the cylinder. Make sure that you don't have to se select the whole cylinder, like just the area where you know that you will add this highlight and just come in with it. And you have nice and glossy. Quite an quite a easy trick. Uh, but yeah, you can take those away and also just stick with overlay. Overlay is a little bit more subdued and it already gives you this uh, white automatically. But yeah, this, this is a little trick uh, that you can use. And that was today's lesson and next week we're going to see how we can put this into application. So how can we apply it to, for example, robots? Maybe this robot? Maybe not. I'll see you next week.